Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where we delve into the past to understand the present. I'm Chuck. And I'm Marco. Today, we're exploring one of the most pivotal battles in modern history, the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. We have a special guest today, CJ, a military historian. Welcome to the show, CJ. Thanks for having me, guys. Excited to discuss this fascinating topic with you. Before diving into the thick of the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, let's paint the picture of the world stage. It's the mid 20th century, and the aftermath of World War II is reshaping global dynamics. Right, Chuck. Europe is in recovery, but colonial empires are on the brink of dissolution. Asia, Africa, and the Middle East are hotbeds of anti-colonial movements. In this era, Vietnam is under French colonial rule. The Vietnamese, yearning for independence, are rallying under leaders like Ho Chi Minh. This struggle sets the stage for the First Indochina War. It's a clash of ideologies too. The Cold War is escalating, with the US and Soviet Union vying for global influence. Vietnam becomes a battleground for these competing ideologies with the West backing France and the Communists supporting the Viet Minh. Meanwhile, in Vietnam, the divide between the Communist North and the anti-Communist South is becoming more pronounced, setting the stage for future conflicts. And let's not forget China's role. The Chinese Revolution has just ended, and Mao's communist regime is keen on supporting similar movements in neighboring countries, including Vietnam. This turmoil isn't just political. Vietnam's terrain, culture, and society are unique and play a crucial role in how events unfold. The dense jungles, rugged mountains, and local support systems give the Viet Minh distinct advantages. So, we have a world recovering from war, a region struggling for self-determination, and a country divided by ideology and colonial legacy. This is the world in which the Battle of Dien Bien Phu unfolds. Exactly, and it's crucial to understand this backdrop to fully grasp the significance of what happened at Dien Bien Phu. The planning of Dien Bien Phu was a chess game of military strategy. Let's break down the French plan first. General Henri Navarre, leading the French forces, envisioned Dien Bien Phu as a formidable stronghold. That's right Chuck. Navarre's strategy was built on a concept called the Hedgehog Defense. The idea was to establish a heavily fortified base that would be irresistible to the Viet Minh. The French believed that by drawing the Viet Minh into a large-scale battle, they could leverage their superior firepower and air superiority. The French also saw Dien Bien Phu as a way to cut off Viet Minh's routes into Laos and to draw their forces away from populated areas. It was a strategic point, both geographically and politically. But the terrain was a challenge. Dien Bien Phu was located in a remote valley in northwestern Vietnam, surrounded by hills. The French underestimated the difficulty of supplying and reinforcing such a remote outpost. Now, let's switch to the Viet Minh's planning. General Vio Nguyen Giap, a brilliant strategist, saw the French move as an opportunity. Giap planned to isolate and besiege the French garrison. Giap's plan was revolutionary. He decided to transport heavy artillery over difficult terrain, including disassembling pieces to carry them through the jungle and mountains. This move was a game-changer, as it allowed the Viet Minh to bombard the French positions from the surrounding highlands. And logistics played a huge part. The Viet Minh constructed an extensive network of tunnels and trenches, allowing them to move supplies and troops safely, despite French aerial bombardment. It was a clash of strategies the French relying on conventional warfare and the Viet Minh employing guerrilla tactics and leveraging the element of surprise. This planning phase set the stage for one of the most significant battles in modern history. Both sides had their strategies, but the Viet Minh's understanding of the terrain and unconventional approach gave them a crucial edge. The Battle of Dien Bien Phu was not just a military confrontation, it was a testament to how innovative strategy and an intimate knowledge of local terrain could challenge traditional military power. Let's delve into the start of the battle. On March 13, 1954, the first shots were fired, signaling the beginning of a brutal 55-day siege. The French, under General Henri Navarre, had established a fortified base at Dien Bien Phu. 
their strategy was to draw the Viet Minh into a conventional battle, where they could leverage their superior firepower and air support. But General Vo Nguyen Jayap of the Viet Minh had a different plan. He managed to move heavy artillery over mountainous terrain, something the French thought impossible. These guns were strategically positioned on the high ground surrounding the valley, giving the Viet Minh a significant tactical advantage. The siege began with intense artillery bombardment from the Viet Minh, targeting the French airstrip and making it unusable. This move cut off French supply lines and reinforcements, a major setback for the French. The French were caught off guard by the intensity and precision of the Viet Minh's artillery fire. Their fortified positions, thought to be impenetrable, were suddenly vulnerable. In response, the French launched several counterattacks, trying to capture the high ground. However, these efforts were met with fierce resistance. The Viet Minh, using their superior knowledge of the terrain and guerrilla tactics, inflicted heavy casualties on the French forces. The battle wasn't just a military confrontation, it was a psychological battle too. The French morale started to dwindle as the siege prolonged, and the relentless bombardment continued day and night. Meanwhile, the Viet Minh's morale was high. They were fighting on their home turf, for their independence, and their tactics were proving effective against a superior military power. This phase of the battle set the tone for the rest of the siege. The French, despite their technological and numerical superiority, found themselves in a dire situation, underestimating the Viet Minh's resolve and tactical ingenuity. It was a classic underdog story unfolding in real time. The Viet Minh, using unconventional warfare, were slowly turning the tide against one of the world's most powerful armies. Amidst the chaos of dying Bien Phu, there were countless tales of heroism and tragic losses. Let's delve into some of these stories. One of the most notable heroes was Lieutenant Colonel Marcel Bigard. He commanded the 6th Colonial Paratrooper Battalion and was known for his leadership and bravery. His unit held out against overwhelming odds, and he personally led several counterattacks to regain lost ground. Then there's the story of Nurse Genevieve de Gallard. Dubbed the Angel of Dying Bien Phu, she provided medical care under extreme conditions. Her compassion and dedication amidst the horrors of war brought a glimmer of humanity to the battlefield. On the Viet Minh side, there's Captain Phan Dinh Jiet. He led a daring charge against a key French position, sacrificing his life in the process. His act of bravery was celebrated throughout Vietnam and became a symbol of the Viet Minh's determination. But these heroic acts came at a steep price. The French suffered over 2,000 deaths and thousands more wounded or captured. Among the captured were many who would endure years of harsh imprisonment. The Viet Minh casualties were even higher, estimated between 8,000 to 10,000 killed. The siege's intensity and length took a heavy toll on both sides, physically and psychologically. Many of the dead were never identified, and their remains lay in the valley of Dien Bien Phu, a solemn reminder of the battle's ferocity. The human cost of this battle went beyond the numbers. It left deep scars on the survivors, families, and both nations. The psychological impact, particularly on the French POWs, was profound and long-lasting. These stories of heroism and the grim reality of the casualties highlight the human aspect of war. It's not just about strategies and tactics, but about the people who lived, fought, and often died in these battles. Dying Bien Phu was a stark reminder of the horrors of war and the bravery of those who face its darkest moments. The fall of Dien Bien Phu was a dramatic and pivotal moment in the battle. By early May, the situation for the French forces had become desperate. The French defenses were crumbling under the relentless Viet Minh assault. The French had organized their defenses into several strong points, named after Navarre's mistresses, Huguette, Claudine, Elion, and others. One by one, these strong points were being overrun. Particularly crucial was the fall of Elaine II, a key position fiercely contested by both sides. The Viet Minh launched massive human wave attacks, while the French, running low on ammunition and medical supplies, fought desperately to hold their ground. On May 7, the situation reached its climax. General de Castries, the French commander at Dien Bien Phu, was confined to his bunker, with communications largely cut off. Viet Minh forces launched a final all-out assault. The end came quickly after that. By the evening, the last French resistance had been quelled. The Viet Minh had captured the entire garrison, including General de Castries and his staff. 
the French surrender was a profound shock to France and the world. It marked not just a military defeat, but the end of an era. The myth of Western military invincibility had been shattered. The capture of over 11,000 French soldiers, including many wounded, was a humanitarian crisis. These prisoners faced a grueling march to POW camps and years of captivity. For the Viet Minh, it was a triumphant moment. General Giap's strategy and the sacrifice of his troops had paid off. Dien Bien Phu was a symbol of colonial resistance and a catalyst for change in the region. The fall of Dien Bien Phu was a turning point in history. It not only ended French colonial rule in Indochina but also set the stage for the Geneva Accords, leading to the eventual division of Vietnam. This battle reshaped the geopolitical landscape of Southeast Asia and had lasting implications for the Cold War dynamics globally. The Battle of Dien Bien Phu wasn't just a decisive military victory, it had a ripple effect that resonated across the globe. Let's unpack its broader implications. First and foremost, the defeat signaled the end of French colonial rule in Indochina. This was a major shift in global politics, as it encouraged other colonial regions to seek independence. Indeed Marco, Dien Bien Phu became a symbol of national liberation. It inspired anti-colonial movements in Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America. The message was clear, a determined, well-organized guerrilla force could defeat a colonial power. On the geopolitical front, it intensified the Cold War tensions. The U.S. became more involved in Southeast Asia, fearing the spread of communism. This set the stage for American involvement in Vietnam, leading to the Vietnam War. The battle also had significant implications for NATO and the Western alliance. France, humiliated and financially drained by the war, began re-evaluating its role in NATO and its global military commitments. Additionally, it altered the dynamics within the communist bloc. China's support for the Viet Minh bolstered its position as a significant player in the communist movement, sometimes rivaling the Soviet Union. Domestically, in France, the defeat led to political upheaval. It was one of the factors that contributed to the collapse of the Fourth Republic and the rise of Charles de Gaulle in the Fifth Republic. And let's not forget the human impact. The battle forever changed the lives of those who fought and survived. It left a legacy of physical and psychological scars and reshaped the collective memory of nations involved. In Vietnam, Dien Bien Phu became a symbol of national pride and resistance. It's celebrated as a testament to the Vietnamese people's resilience and their struggle for independence. The Battle of Dien Bien Phu was more than a military engagement, it was a watershed moment that altered the course of history, reshaping international relations and the global struggle for independence and sovereignty. Dien Bien Phu's legacy is profound. It's a reminder of how determination, tactics, and knowledge of the terrain can triumph against seemingly insurmountable odds. As we wrap up, we want to thank our listeners for joining us on this journey through history. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and share our podcast. And if you have a topic you'd like us to cover, reach out to us on social media. We love hearing from you. Thanks for having me guys. It was a blast. And thank you CJ, for your insights. That's our show for today. We hope it's given you a new perspective on the Battle of Dien Bien Phu and its lasting impact on world history. Remember, history is not just about the past. It's a lens through which we can view and understand our present. Thanks for tuning in. Stay curious and keep exploring. Until next time, farewell from the History AI Podcast. Step into the thrilling world of sports betting with The Starting Line, an introduction to sports betting. Whether you're a beginner or simply curious, this comprehensive guide takes you from the basics to the advanced. Learn to decode odds, develop winning strategies, and bet responsibly. Get your copy now and transform every game into an adventure. The starting line is your first step towards mastering the art of sports betting. Available on Amazon.